guys. <laughs> Here is act three of Henry V. It starts like every act in this play does with the prologue. So the character of the chorus comes out and describes for us in beautiful language what's happened since last we left our hero. It's been a couple of weeks. Henry V has sailed from England all the way to France and immediately uh, started fighting. So he's surrounded this city called Harfleur. Um, all the people in the city have gone into the city and they've closed the gates. It's a walled city and uh, Henry V hasn't been able to like break in. So this is what we call a siege battle. The people of Harfleur are waiting for the army to give up and go away and the army is waiting for the people of Harfleur to run out of food and water and have to surrender. So they've been fighting for a couple of weeks and now they're sort of at a standstill. And that's where we start. Act three, scene one starts with like an epic speech. Henry V is a young king. This is his first command. Um, it's not looking super great right now. So he stands up in front of his soldiers and he gives this like rousing patriotic speech. And it goes like this. Once more into the breach, dear friends, once more, or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger, stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard favored rage, then lend the eye a terrible aspect. And then it keeps going. He uses some more similes here. He's like, make sure your eyes stick out all menacing like, like a brass cannon from a warship. Uh, he goes on in this vein for quite a while. And then he reminds the soldiers that the English have traditionally been really fierce fighters and that they, um, like their fathers and their father's fathers were um, really good fighters and they need to continue the tradition. He tells them not to embarrass their moms by being cowards. So that's fun. And then he ends with this really great catchphrase. You've probably heard it before. It goes like this. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge, cry God for Harry, England, and St. George. So, let me break it down for you. Once more into the breach, dear friends, once more. A breach is like a break in the wall, and he's saying, let's all, let's try this one more time. Let's charge the wall one more time. And either we'll make it, or we can plug up this hole in the wall with all the corpses, corpses of the English soldiers that have died trying, and then we can, like, climb over them. <laughs> It's not as encouraging as he thinks it is. Anyway, he's like, you got to toughen up, guys. Stiffen the sinews. Uh, in peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. He's like, violence is never the answer. Um, normally, <laughs> you should be modest and still and moderate and, you know, not have a hot temper. But in the middle of a war, I need you guys to go a little not so crazy. Like... Be like a tiger. Er, er. <laughs> um, and then at the end, he's like, I can see you straining at your slips like a greyhound. He's like, I can see you all ready to go. I'm just going to release you and we're all just going to attack the city of Harfleur. Uh, Harry is a nickname for Henry. So when they say, cry God for Henry, England, and St. George, he's like, do it for me, Henry V. And then God and also St. George, who's the patron saint of England. And he's like, ah, it's a very cool speech. And um, <laughs> on the canvas page, I posted a link of uh, an actor who plays Loki. Tom Hiddleston is his name, I think, uh, giving this speech. And he's a much better actor than I am. So it's really spectacular. I highly recommend you check it out. And that's the first act of, I mean, that's the first scene of act three. Do you really believe he was resurrected? The question is not if, but how. The game's afoot. Follow your spirit, and, and upon this charge, cry God for Harry, England, and St. George. Okay, in Act 3, Scene 2, we get to see the soldier's reaction to Henry's speech. Now, um, Bardolph is like, yeah, let's be like tigers and charge. But all the rest of them, Nim and Pistol and the boy, are like, hmm... He's asking us to die on the wall of Harf floor. I'm not feeling super motivated here. <laughs> um... Their reaction to Henry V's speech is really interesting because they're hearing the words that he's saying and not getting all caught up in the patriotic stuff. Um, it reminds me of that speech that short little prince dude gives in Shrek. You know the one I mean. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Yeah, that one. So... <laughs> They're like, oh, we're, uh, uh. 
they're hanging back, right? They're not charging the walls of Harfleur. So um, an officer, a Welsh captain named Flewellen, we're going to talk about him later, uh, comes and says, hey, go charge the walls, right? Get. And he beats them with a sword until they run towards the battle. Historically, this is very accurate. That's, that's how it used to go. Oh, did you bring me a toy? <laughs> it's the dog here. Hold on a minute. Thank you. Go get it. Where was I? Uh, oh, um, so they all run off towards the battle, although whether they're actually going to, like, fight, I don't know. The boy stays behind for a couple of minutes. Remember how I said the boy was going to be important? Oh, squeaky toys. Remember how I said the boy was going to be important? He's like the moral center here. So he pauses for a few minutes. He has the stage alone, and he's like, these men are not very good men. They're all thieves. They're teaching me how to pick pockets. They think it's really easy to steal from other soldiers. I feel like they're a bad influence. I'm going to look for a better job. It's very interesting. It's a crazy insight because he's like a 10 year old child and he's like, oh, these adults around me are a bad moral influence. Hi, help, come here, help. And that's the act. <laughs> Okay, in the next scene, we see some captains gathered together and they're talking about um, what's going on in the battle. This is just going to give us a picture of what's going on in the fight. So we see Captain Flewellen again and a guy named Gower. They're going to be important. Plus a couple of other officers, um, McMorris and Jamie. You'll never hear from them again, so don't worry about those two. Uh, they talk about the tunnels. Remember, Harfleur is a walled city and the English can't get over the wall. So they have this crazy idea to tunnel underneath. Digging the tunnels is hard. A lot of men die. Um, it's dirty. Like the tunnels collapse. It's really hard work. So they're talking about that and really just painting a picture for the audience about how the fight's going. Then we see Henry V approaching the gates of Harfleur. The governor of Harfleur of the town has declared like a truce so they can talk. They call it a parley, like in Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, <laughs> and Henry V is like, okay, if you surrender, we won't kill everyone in the town. But if you make us fight our way in, we're going to slaughter every single person living in this town. And the governor was like, okay, I don't want to surrender, but I just got word that the French army is not going to be here in time to save us. So like under protest, I'm going to surrender the town to you. And Henry was like, yay, on to the next city, the next city in France that he wants to conquer, that is. Okay, in the next scene, scene four, uh, we get to see a princess of France. Her name is Catherine. She's uh, the daughter of the king. And she sees the writing on the wall here. She sees how well the English are fighting. And she has a sneaking suspicion she might, um, she might need to learn English. So she asks her maid, Alice, to teach her some English words. And um, Alice, her maid, goes through and teaches her some English words. And she repeats them. Uh, basic body part words. This is the head. This is the word for foot. This is the word for shoulder. This is the word for elbow. Um, and Catherine, with her really thick French accent, mispronounces them. She mispronounces these words in a way that makes makes them sound like really dirty swear words. So it's a very funny scene. It's also pretty much the only scene in the entire play where women are front and center and get speaking roles. So that's fun. In the next scene, scene five, we see King Charles of France and the Dauphin and his advisors, and they're all gathered around. They're having a meeting because they're really upset that the English have been doing so well in this little war and uh, they've got to raise more troops. They talk about how embarrassing it is to be beaten by the English and how their wives are making fun of them. And uh, they just like rally their army. So it's a very short scene. Okay, in scene six, we see Flewellen and Gower again. Um, they're talking about a battle that's just happened on a bridge. Um, it's a really incredible battle. The English have won and driven the French off the bridge. So they have a clear path to march into the rest of France. Um, then Pistol comes up and he begs a favor of Flewellen. He's like, hey, my friend Bardolph has, was caught stealing and now he's been sentenced to hang. Could you intervene and maybe make it so he just goes to jail instead? And Flewellen says, no, the rule is if you get caught stealing, you get hanged. So that's just the end of that. Pistol is not happy with this answer. He says some very naughty words. He makes an obscene gesture. He stalks off. Then Henry V rides up 
and he talks with Flewellen and with Gower about the battle on the bridge. No English lives have been lost in this battle, except for Bardolf, who was hanged for stealing. When Henry V hears this, he doesn't have any emotion on his face. He's not sad or anything or shocked, which is really interesting because he knew Bardolf back when he was Prince Hal and they all hang out together um, in that tavern in East Cheap. So it's kind of interesting. Then a French messenger rides up and he delivers a message uh, to Henry V from the King of France, King Charles. King Charles has sent Henry a really rude message that's like, hey, this little war thing has got out of hand. Now I'm gonna have to come and just like beat you and your army super hard. <laughs> Only he says it a little ruder than that. Anyway, Henry V, again, no emotion, very calm, very controlled, sends back a message that's like, hey, my soldiers are tired they're tired from all the French butt they've been kicking, but I'm going to keep fighting anyway because I'm right and you're wrong. Like, I know I'm going to win because morally I'm correct. Yikes. And then the last scene is a really short scene where we see the French camp and we see some of the French nobles that are going to be leading the battle. Um... They're just joking around. Uh, one guy keeps bragging about his horse. He's really proud of it. Um, they say some really rude things about the English, and then that's the end of Act 3.